In this video, we will be discussing about ECG analysis. How normal ECG graphs should look. So before starting anything, we should know the duration of one small square in ECG. That is 40 millisecond. This small. And now starting with the P wave. This P wave is atrial depolarization and it should be less than 120 millisecond. That means it should be less than three small squares. And about the vertical height, it's very important. And it should be less than 2.5 millimeter in limb lead and should be less than 1.5 millimeter in chest lead. And if it is more than this, it will lead to P panmunale. About the PR interval. The PR interval is nothing about R. But it is from the starting of P wave to the starting of Q wave. And it indicates AV nodal conduction. The main thing is the PR interval is inversely proportional to heart rate. That means if a patient is having tachycardia, then the PR interval will be short because heart rate is high. And if a patient is having bradycardia, we will notice prolonged PR interval. And the PR interval should be between 120 to 200 millisecond. That means 3 to 5 small squares. Now about the Q wave. It is septal activation and it should be less than 40 millisecond. That is just one small square. And if it goes more than that, it will lead to deep Q wave. Both height wise and width wise. So when we are talking about normal Q wave, it is small Q and not capital one. And it is in negative direction. Why negative? Because we measure this Q wave on lead 5, V5 and lead V6. And as this vector for Q wave is going away from there, from this lead, it will be negative. Now about the QRS complex. This QRS complex is ventricular depolarization and it is between 80 to 100 millisecond. That means it will be between 2 to 2.5 small squares. And in this also, the Q will be small. Now about the QT interval. QT interval is from the start of Q to the end of T. It represents ventricular depolarization plus ventricular repolarization. And it is between 360 to 440 milliseconds. That is 9 to 11 small squares. But in electrolyte imbalance, this QT will be affected because QT is inversely proportional to electrolytes. So if a patient is having hypokalemia, he will have a QT prolongation. You will see a QT prolonged. But in a patient of hyperkalemia, the QT will be short. Now about the ST segment. This ST segment is from the end of S to the start of T. And this, this point is also called the J point. Now the T waves. This T waves follows the ST segment. If ST goes up, T goes up. And if ST goes down, T goes down. The vertical height is very important. It should be less than 5 mm in limb lead and less than 10 mm in chest lead. Now about the U waves. This is delayed repolarization of Purkinje fibers. It is a normal finding. But if it is prominent U wave, then it is because of hypokalemia. The heart rate where it is more than 60 to 75, we can't see a U wave. But it is a normal condition in athletes and 
many physically active persons now we will just take a small review what we studied in this video so about the waves the p wave should be less than 3 small squares the r wave should be between 3 to 5 small squares the q wave is just about 1 small square the qrs should be between 2 to 2.5 small squares and the qt should be between 9 to 11 small squares now about regular rhythms and irregular rhythms in regular rhythm the rr interval will be equal as you can see here but in an irregular rhythm the rr interval is not equal thanks for watching don't forget to like and subscribe and share with your friends